everybody! In today's video I'm going to be showing you these gorgeous neon pumpkins that are on my nails currently and the colors are not your traditional Halloween colors. They aren't strictly orange, they're just not strictly green leaves. I kind of went a little bit more like, I don't know, fluid with my color scheme and I love it. It's so bright and neon and part of the reason those neons show up so well is I use this gorgeous dark purple from Madame Glam's House of Mystery collection, which is new, and I use that in the background, which is going to make the orange tones, the purple, is going to help those orange tones and those greens really look even brighter than they would have before. So that background color is just, just the right one. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. I will put the color names of everything that I used in the description box below, so check for that, and I will see you all next time. Bye! So I'm going to begin with that color. It is Shadows from the Madame Glam House of Mystery. And all the colors I am using are Madame Glam. I tried to stick with ones that are newer so that they should be available still. However, I do believe a few of them are discontinued, unfortunately. But they will all be down below. Now I'm going to take the black pudding gel and I'm going to create a little shadow on my shadow with just along my cuticle just to darken it and create that ombre. That black pudding gel is the best thing for creating black ombres. It just blends out so flawlessly with a sponge. Now with white gel paint, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be painting my pumpkin base. Because I want these neons to show up as super neon, I'm going to paint all of the design to start out with, with this white base. The white gel paint does a great job of creating a nice smooth color in one coat so I don't have to do two or three coats if I were to be using a white gel polish it probably just would need to have a couple coats before the background color was really like blocked out and you just had that nice smooth white base so I've got my pumpkin I'm going to add a curly little stem and then I decided to incorporate some stars into this design I like it kind of just adds a bit more whimsy to it and it keeps it a little more jovial so I do like the little stars and now I'm going to take some really bright pink and I'm going to start out my pumpkin when I'm painting this first pumpkin I kind of started to try to get in the bumps on the pumpkin but eventually I just sort of smoothed them out because I realized that I'll add those in more later so I've got my pink don't worry about creating like the lines going Going down just blend in it blend in your colors going from pink to like a beautiful coral and that one I know is new that one is the fire sign from Madame Glam such a pretty color and then I'm going to do a brighter orange this is more of like a tangerine orange and then if you have space go ahead and do like a yellow orange on the very tip I'm going to skip over the traditional Halloween orange entirely so go from like the tangerine to more of like the yellow bright orange don't do like a normal Halloween orange try to keep it in those neons now using a purple I'm going to now start trying to work in the bumps in the pumpkin this purple doesn't have a huge difference between because it's more like a fuchsia color between the pink that I used originally and the purple so it just creates that first nice layer now I'm going to take a purple or purple and I'm going to add a second layer of these each time I'm adding this next bit of the pumpkin bumps I'm getting my lines a little thinner so the first time they are pretty thick lines I was kind of doing it in a bit of a like haphazard way and then they get a little thinner and then as you add the darker colors they'll get thinner again using a teal color I'm going to start shading in my pumpkin and then wet on wet I'm going to add lime green so I'm not going to cure the teal first I'm just gonna keep going because I'm not overlapping anything they're each going in their own spots and if they blend a little bit that's fine after I have my lime green still before I cure because I'm not overlapping I'm going to add some color over my stars now I'm going to take some darker color of gel polish this is going back to shadow or shadows and I'm going to be adding the face on my pumpkin as well as some of the little detailing and the shading on the rest of the pumpkin to just define it a little the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place in my eyes and for each pumpkin I'm going to do because I have a pumpkin on my ring finger as well I'm going to do a different face shape this one's going to be a little bit grumpy so I'm going to tip the eyes going up make sure that those are nice and pointy I'm going to do a simple mouth I am NOT doing a nose on my pumpkins if you did decide that you wanted to carve in a nose as well I would start with the nose and then do the eyes just to help keep everything centered but because I knew I wasn't doing a nose I obviously couldn't start there now I'm going to take the shadows as well and I'm going to add some of that shading and the little skinny details like I had mentioned. I'm going to just outline the tops of the pumpkin bumps, not go all the way down. I don't want it to get kind of in the way of the eyes and the other facial features. I'm going to add little lines around the eyes and a couple lines on the stem as well. After that's done, I'm going to take black gel paint and I'm going to be adding some more darkness and more like precision around the eyes for the most part. And I'm going to do a little bit of like a half outline around the smile. This is just going to give it a little shading. It doesn't really show that much in the video because the dark purple shadows is so dark to begin with but it does actually add quite a bit in person 
Now I'm going to show you the middle nail. This is going to be the one that's just got the little vine and the leaf. My ring finger is basically the same as the thumb, so we don't have to see that one again. But on this one, I'm going to start by adding that nice curly vine, just going down the one side of the nail. Have fun with it. Kind of, you know, find the little swoop. I find that when I start painting a curly cue like this, I don't really have a plan to begin with. I don't have like an intention of where it's going to go. And I just start adding my curves and they end up looking so cute and so natural. I think if you were to have like, like a direct direct plan of how you want it to turn out, it probably wouldn't look as natural or as organic. I'm going to paint the leaf coming off of my vine in one spot wherever it seems like I have a nice space to fit the leaf. And then just to continue with the plan, I'm going to add one more curly cue and then a star. Just to keep, you know, keep those cute little stars in place here and there. Add that last one going in the corner there right next to my leaf. After that's done, just like before, you're going to want to cure that gel paint completely and then start adding in your colors. The majority of the colors on this one are going to be the colors I used on the stem of my pumpkin, but I'm also going to use a yellow. So I'm going to start out with my kind of teal aqua color, adding in the shading. So especially where there's ever an overlap, like around that curly cue where it goes underneath, you're going to want to shade in that. And then just a little bit here and there to add some color variants so it's not just one shade of green. I'm going to add some yellow highlighting here and there. The yellow and the neon green do end up looking very similar in the end but that little bit of yellow highlight really does add some extra height whenever you are painting something like this and you're doing all of these different colors it really helps to figure out what is on top and what's underneath so in this case especially around that place where it overlaps you want the darker color the teal to the left and right of the under of the top part so it's like going around the underneath and then your brightest color the yellow to be right down the center that's going to help create like it's going up and over and it's curling around itself and now I'm going to go after it's cured go back to my teal and I'm going to add some of the little veining inside the leaf and that one's done on the ring finger or on the index finger I'm going to start by adding a little swoop of dots and then three stars in the middle I was kind of taking inspiration from this um, for this design from Lisa Frank and kind of her styling and I love the way that there's just this whimsy and it's kind of fluid you know there's no really rules to her stuff if you look at some of the really psychedelic things like the folders and whatnot from back when and I know she's made to come back and there's been makeup palettes and everything recently it's there's like some other patterns mixed in as well so I thought you know what I'm just going to add some dots and some stars and just kind of have some fun with it this design while being Halloween it's not one of those where you look at it and you're like oh that's intensely Halloween because it's all orange and black and spider webs this one has some extra extra little fun elements to it and I love how bright it is I'm going to add a little rainbow of stars so my darkest color is that purple besides the background color and then the fuchsia pink tangerine, yellow, orange, yellow, green, teal. And then I'm going to pick three of the colors to paint the stars. On the pinky nail, the last one of this whole, this whole thing, I'm going to just paint three stars, one big, one medium, and one small. I am going to just kind of fill it in. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this one very light and very whimsical. I also wanted to do a design that was not just those Halloween colors because I have a lot of clients who have come to me and they say they want Halloween nails, but they don't want your traditional Halloween colors. And I love that that's kind of where we're at with Halloween. I've done some rose gold Halloween sets lately that were interesting. I've done some strictly like lavender Halloween sets on my mom. I actually did a spider design that was all black and then neon spider webs and neon spiders. So I feel like the Halloween colors are not as necessary to Halloween designs as they once were. And I love that. I love to see these shifts in designs. I also feel like it makes it so that people can personalize what they want a lot more. The last thing to do on this set is to apply some top coat. I'm going with a glossy top coat. Usually I would do matte, but because I want to keep that really vivid color separation between the dark and the bright, matte top coat would make the dark colors a little less intensely dark. So I did stick with the glossy. I hope you guys like this set as much as I do. Like I said, I am so in love with the neons. I feel like they just really embody a childlike whimsy that I have been feeling this Halloween. You know, making my daughter's costume and everything. I just felt like this was kind of the way to go. Plus, you know, they're happy, you know, so that's good. I hope you guys like them as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well.